All right. I want to talk about what I feed my Daphnia and portion sizes. Uh, when I first started with Daphnia, I kind of did it all the traditional ways, you know, trying to with green water and and whatnot. And um, I ultimately found my way to baby food, you know, like uh, spinach and garden vegetable, sweet potato. Then, you know, ultimately I found out that the melon type baby foods worked really great also, if not better. So I really evolved to just throwing in chunks of melon, essentially, with my cultures. Uh, kind of freaks people out, but, you know, the... Uh, you know, it just bleeds its nutrients right into the water. So we're going to try with the... Uh, we're going to feed... Um, strawberry today and uh, I picked a strawberry just because it's a something the Daphne will like and um, it, it's just easy to see the portion sizes so like I said I, I started just with um, am I getting in there make sure I'm in the we're just gonna use the strawberry like I said I just started out traditional and then um, over time just went to baby food but you know, unless you got a baby around, um, it goes to waste pretty fast. So I just ended up using this pieces of melon and it worked really good. And I actually saw a video once of a guy who, uh, he, you know, it was like a, a fish farm. And he uh, finished his banana and just flung it into his Daphnia tub, right? And I just kind of felt like that guy knew something. And... Uh, so it was actually banana peel that really started me on exploring foods for Daphnia. And I'll tell you just uh, what's going on is with Daphnia is their bodies are made of a substance called... Uh, um, oh, I can't remember the name now. Uh, chitlin? Chitlin. Um, I think. <laughs> I should have looked up before I started this video. But it's made from glucose and calcium, all right? So what does this, what's the strawberry rich in? Glucose. So that's really the secret with just like melon. So, um, you know, and the question I probably could ask mo the most about are just portion sizes. Like people are just uh, really freaked out about portion sizes because I you know I tell people in my like my listings with these to use a you know something that's just a couple size of a couple grains of rice and you know that's what I'm showing you and just keep in mind Daphnia tummies they're not that big I mean there's no, there's not that many organisms in these uh, cultures to feed any more um, and I'll tell you the, probably the biggest reason people crash their cultures as they overfeed them okay so let me just drop this in here so i'm not waving it around all right a little piece of strawberry i wanted to show you one other thing too i probably the item i feed the most is the banana peel and i'm not going to add any because i just fed these cultures yesterday um but i also like an equal size piece of banana peel and i i I like the greener better. Why? Because uh, it lasts longer. It will decay over a week, two weeks, three weeks sometimes. And um, what that does, it, it creates uh, decaying or organic matter in various stages of decay. So is if I put in a piece of banana peel every week, there's a... It's... There's always banana peel in various stages of decay, and it's releasing microorganisms that the Daphnia can also consume, right? So, that was just the portion sizes. Just a piece of fruit, melon, whatever, size of a couple grains of rice, um, and a piece of banana peel about the same size it's all these little cultures need um, you can um, 
And if you really do want to, uh, you know, the purpose I, I sell these for is for you to just get some starts of Daphnia from, right? So I cycle these and then you take starts of Daphnia from to start in your culture. So there's really not a need to overfeed these. But if you did want to um, get the, a little bit larger harvest, instead of a, a larger portion of food, I would feed it maybe um, an, an extra portion, you know, like uh, feed it every couple days. Yeah, so one other thing I want to touch on when it comes to feeding Daphnia, you know, like with this melon, one of the things it also does is it feeds the snails, right? And it's probably the thing people overlook the most in a Daphnia culture are the snails, their importance. You know, if they're in there, they need to remain healthy too, the population of snails. So that piece of melon will just feed a snail population and the reason i bring that up is snail poop is rich in the micro uh organisms that uh daphne will consume right so daphne poop or uh, snail poop is just a, a beneficial thing for daphne so by feeding a little piece of melon or something you know a whole food like this uh it goes it's uh friendlier to the snails let me touch on this too. Keep in mind, like with the snails, there are other things feeding these Daphnia. There's a light on here. That light adds energy. You know, there's a prior organic matter that's still in there. It's um, just become biome, right, that the Daphnia can consume out of. So, again, that is a portion size, you know, a piece of melon or fruit cucumber, you know, a piece of banana, um, any of that kind of stuff, grapes, uh, size of a couple grains of rice and a banana peel, similar size. Just be careful. Like I said, probably the biggest reason people crash their cultures is they overfeed them and they probably don't even know it, um, because it kind of has a, uh, impact a little bit down the line uh, anyway i just want to show folks portion sizing